So this morning, once again, I thank God for the opportunity He gives me to share in this place. And like I always say, uh, we're going to go home early, enjoy the rest of the day with the family and friends. Or we can start getting ready for another hectic week on our way. Uh, I, find, I find the word of the Lord to be simple. And I love to find simple teachings that I can apply to my daily life. So I hope that... Uh, that we all can take something back today with us. A word of, of encouragement, a word of hope. And especially that we can remember things that sometimes we forget. We know, but sometimes we forget. And I know because it happens to me. Many times I forget the Lord's teaching. So this morning I want to start reading on the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. So if you have your Bible, your tablet, your phone. Follow, uh, follow my reading so you can verify that I'm reading from the Bible and not somewhere, some other book. So. So, Luke chapter 10, verse 1. It says, after these things... I'm going to stop right there. So, after these things... Other version says, uh, after all of these things... So, when I read this, I asked myself, what are these things? So I said, okay, let me, let me read chapter 9. So I understand why chapter 10 starts this way. So chapter 9 is 62 verses long. I'm not going to read it because if not, we'll be here all the way to Thanksgiving. But it's a, it's a very long chapter. Why? Because many things happen in that chapter. And I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to give you a quick recap of chapter 9. It says here that Jesus called the 12 apostles and gave them power and sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. That's one thing that happened in chapter 9. Then Jesus fed the multitude. He performed miracles. Miracles so great that there was left over after feeding the multitude. Then Peter confessed Jesus is the Christ. Then Jesus predicts his death and resurrection. Then Jesus tells them to take up the cross and follow him. Then Jesus was with Moses and Elijah in front of Peter, John, and James. And a voice from heaven came and says, this is my beloved son. Then Jesus heals a boy. And then Jesus keeps teaching. One, two, three, four times. Time after time, he keeps teaching. So, I can see that this chapter was a very busy chapter. Many things happen. At one point, the writer points out, eight days after this, this happens. And that was when Jesus was with Moses and Elijah in the mount. 
And then right after that says, and the next day, Jesus heals a boy. So I don't have the time frame on the things that were happening here. But it looks like it was one thing after another. One thing after another. It was nonstop. So chapter 10 starts with after these things. And after these things, a lot of more things happen. Jesus sent 70 apostles keeps teaching. The 70 return, tell what happened. And then there's Luke chapter 10, verse 21, 22, 23, and 24. When Jesus rejoiced, he says, all these things you know and you see because the Father wills to do. These are things that are hidden from the prophets and kings. But he wills to reveal to you. So, and then we see more teachings. And when I see that, it says, in all of these things, I see teachings, revelations, miracles, announcements, judgments. There's confessions. And all of this seems to be happening one thing after another one. Now, this takes me what, what I want to share with you this morning. I'm sure you have read this many times. I don't pretend to teach you anything new. I just want to remind you of a story and the teachings behind it from my perspective or my point of view. So here we go. Sorry about all the introduction, but I need it to say and mention all these things. Verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sisters have left me to serve alone? Therefore, therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. So the first verse says, now, it happened that they went, and it was a certain village and certain woman. So make it sound like it was uh, something unplanned. Sounds like Jesus just going by. It 
It sounds like it just happened to be an accident. Now, what do you think? You think it was just another day? You think it was an accident that Jesus was there? Just another day on the road. On the road again. I don't think so. Nothing escapes to the plans of God. Everything is under his master plans and his wills. Amen? I believe there was a purpose for this, another teaching, another revelation, not only for Mar Martha and Mary, but for, also for us today. So Martha, she welcomed Jesus into her house. We all know the importance of accepting Jesus in our hearts and inviting him over to stay with us. Now verse 39 says, And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And again, you know I'm not a great preacher, but I'm going to point out these little things to speak to my heart. So here it seems like Martha also was at the feet of Jesus. They were both there. Hearing the teachings of the Lord. But at one point in that day, Martha being the responsible, the responsible one and the the grown-up, she decides to get up, to leave that place, and start fixing dinner, and start serving all those around her. Verse 40 says, But Martha was distracted with much serving, She was distracted with much work. She was distracted with many things. And she looked at Mary still at the feet of Jesus. While she was doing what she was doing. And she looked again. And Mary was still there. And looked again. And she was still there. I don't know, I think she started thinking, what's up with Mary? She knows better. I mean, we've been through this before. She knows that she needs to help me when we have people over. I, I'm thinking that maybe that was going on in her head. I mean, I understand Jesus is here. But we got a lot of stuff to do. Well, she couldn't take it anymore. And she said, Lord, you do not care. You do not care that my sister left me to serve alone? Verse 41 says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. I hope the Spirit can speak to your heart this moment. So Martha said, Lord, don't you care?
Don't you care about me and my problems? Don't you care about my issues, about my wife, my husband, my son, my daughter? This is why I'm distracted. I'm worried about many things, and you don't care? Don't you care about my job and the stress that is causing me? Don't you care about my health and all the worry I'm going through? Don't you care about my finances? Don't you care about my dreams? Lord, don't you care about my ministry? All these things are worrying me. All these things are burdening me. Don't you care everything I'm doing for you? If I don't do these things, who will, who will do it? Who will take care of these things? But in verse 42... Jesus said, but one thing is needed, only one thing, so you're telling me the only thing that I need is to be at your feet, but what about this, what about the other? And he said, Mary has chosen that good part. So we just saw chapter 9 and 10, where all of these things were happening. And Jesus said, there's only one thing that you need to do. We see apostles receiving power, sealing, healing the sick, going and preaching the gospel, doing all these things. Even Jesus was doing all these things. Healing the sick, doing miracles. But he said there's only one thing that you need to do. And I'm sure he was surrounded with people before through these two chapters. I'm sure when he was teaching or feeding the multitude, there was people surrounding him all the time. And perhaps there was somebody at his feet before. While all these things were happening. But it looks like to me. That this is the first time. That there is connection. Between Jesus. And someone at his feet. Every time we, we come before the king. Every time we come before his presence we have a choice will I be distracted with many things things that are real things that need our attention but will be distracted with these many things Or will I choose the good part? That is a question in my spirit. Will I choose to forget about the things that cause stress and pain and worry? I 
I have a prayer list I keep on my phone. And I go over this list many times. But my list is mostly, Lord, I ask you for this and for that. And Lord, please don't, don't forget about this and that and this and the other. Of course, I thank him for his grace and mercy. But many times I, ask my, I see myself asking for things. His favor. His blessing. But one thing happens when I get to a place where I know he is there with me at that moment in time. When I get close to his presence and I know he's real and he's so near to me. It's when my reality becomes his reality. At that moment, I don't want to ask for anything else. Everything that I had in my mind and in my prayer list becomes secondary. I just want to be with him there at that moment. I can choose to keep asking four things but there's something special about that moment that connection is made between Jesus and me at his feet I just want to listen to him I want to drink from his waters because I know he's restoring my soul. I don't need to ask for anything. So Mary found this place. She found this place of comfort. And Jesus said, this will not be taken away from you. You have found a special place. We also know that life happens. Life happens every Monday, every Tuesday, even every Sunday afternoon. And we have the tendency to forget those things. Those things that the Lord revealed to us, to show us. Those things that we have tasted. And we know they're good. Now we also see that Mary later on she forgot about this place. She forgot about the connection she had with Jesus. I'm not going to blame her. She was going through a really hard time. A very difficult time. This is after Lazarus was dead on John chapter 11 verse 20. says, now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. She heard Jesus was coming. 
But she decided to stay. Seems like she forgot that connection she had. A few verses later. Seems like her memory start coming back because says verse 28 the teacher has come and is calling for you Mary so she arose quickly and went to meet him so verse 32 of John 11 says then Mary then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet that's why I say she started remembering she started remembering the place where she found something special Now she remembered the place, but she forgot the revelation and the teaching. Because she asked, she started questioning the Lord. Where were you? Where were you when I needed you the most? She was being Martha. She said, Lord, don't you care? Like exactly happened if I don't know a few weeks ago or a few months ago. Don't you care about my needs? About my problems? She forgot the essence of that place. So we see that the same Mary that found that special, a special place, a place of refuge and strength, a place where the eyes are open, a place where the Father reveals hidden things to the babes. A place where she had revelation that many prophets and kings have desired to see. Like Jesus told the disciples early in Luke 10. This Mary was sitting at her house having a very difficult time and a hard time. Little by little, she started remembering what it meant to be at Jesus' feet. Also said that verse 33, when Jesus saw her this way, he groaned in the spirit and he was troubled. Jesus was worried about Mary. The fact that she forgot. She forgot what she needed to do. She forgot where she needed to be. But she wasn't turned away or reproach. Another miracle was performed. Lazarus came out alive. And, and Jesus reminded Mary there's no better place to be than at his feet. No better place to stay every day, every moment. Now, I can tell you that she remembered the whole thing now. She remembered the physical place. She remembered the teachings, the revelations. 
the essence of the place. I know this because it's telling me that she remembered in John chapter 12 verse 3. It says, Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil and anointed the feet of Jesus. For me, this is the proof that she remembered. Because Mary surrendered all. At the feet of Jesus. The most precious gift she had. In a sacrifice of love. Because she knew she couldn't repay. What Jesus meant to her. Sometimes we think we don't have much to bring. But he only wants us. He wants me as I am. He knows me. What can I hide from him? But he wants me at his feet. He wants us to choose the good part. I hope we can remember this today. And he, if you are constantly at his feet, I bless the Lord because there's no better place, no greater place. There is no higher place than to be at his feet. This is what I had to share this morning. Just to remind you that we all worry about many things. He reminds us to choose the good part. To remember that we do have a place to go and reconnect. A place where all our needs are secondary. It's a place where we can have a relationship with Him. I would like to sing a song before we go home. Just to remember this place. I would like to join. I would like to ask some of the musicians to join me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, because time after time, you remind me. That there is a place. Where I can go. And all my needs will be supplied. A place where I don't have to ask for anything. But just to spend time with you. Remind me every day, Lord. To choose the good part. Remind me to keep choosing you. And send your Holy Spirit to guide me every day. I thank you, Lord, because you're faithful and you're simple. 
time after time you're teaching me and you're patient with me thank you Lord I will come and bow down at your feet Lord Jesus in your presence this fullness of joy I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you. 